Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's my Carrot Game from Scratch, and I think almost all of us can agree 2021 was a heck of a year for Blender. There was a ton of advancement, a ton of new people came on board supporting the Blender Foundation. Basically, all the hardware companies are out there, all the operating system companies, basically everybody supports Blender right now, and it was a great year. We got a number of new features there, and now what we're going to look at is what is going to be coming in 2022, because the Blender Foundation basically just announced their priorities for 2022, but first, let's start with a recap of 2021, and the best way I can illustrate that is with some dessert. What you see in front of you is a tart. And what I can do is I can come into this tart and you can see we've got strawberries right now. And I can switch this up so that we now have uh, something disgusting. I think like a key lime. Here we now have blueberries. And here we now have uh, black currants, maybe. I'm not actually 100% certain. But what you're seeing here is procedurally generated geometry. This is geometry nodes in action. And geometry nodes are probably the biggest new feature in Blender uh, through last year. Now, this is definitely arguable because there were some big advancements. We had other things like Cycles X and so on. We'll get to those details in just a few minutes. But first off, a little bit of geometry nodes. This is a network of nodes. You can see right here, geometry node network. I could come on up here. So let's say one of the toppings. So we created a strawberry. Here is a node network for creating a strawberry. And then those strawberries are used to create toppings. So we could do things with a strawberry. For example, if we go back to a 3D view and we see here is our strawberry, we could control um, parameters into them, such as how much to cut said strawberries. And then those strawberries are used as part of the node network in geometry nodes in general. I wanted to point out geometry nodes as an example, because again, I think this is probably the biggest feature that happened for Blender 2021. And on top of that, we're building on it with Blender 2022. So there was a roadmap released of what was going to happen in Blender and the key priorities were a number of different things. This one just happened in the most recent beta. We have a new asset browser and pose library. Library overrides, well, we'll get back to that because that's a 2022 thing now. Geometry nodes, uh, we saw just in action right now, probably again, the big feature of 2021, in my opinion. Uh, a Vulkan backend still under development. So we're going to be waiting on that one. Grease pencil improvements, long-term support versions, cycles. We have cycles X, which is the 10th anniversary version of cycles, which is like seven to 10 times faster than it used to be. Uh, animation character pipeline. And this is still ongoing. They got a grant of one plus million dollars to work on animation specific tools. Ongoing work right there. USD importer, USD being universal scene, I think descriptor, uh, description. Anyways, it's a universal file format from Pixar. It's being adopted by pretty much the industry. Uh, so they've gotten better and better USD importing and exporting functionality throughout the year, and that will continue to improve as well, and then some UI improvements. So those were the big projects in 2021. Again, some of them are ongoing, and we're going to see improvements in a variety of these categories in 2022. So now we're looking at the strategic targets for 2022. This is the big announcement out the Blender Institute has announced basically their priorities going forward. It's a recap of the major things that they nailed in 2021, and here is what we are looking at in 2022's agenda. So application templates, overrides, physics, and texturing. Now we have more details on many of these things, so I'm gonna cover them in breakdowns later on, such as application templates, overrides, uh, and physics. So the one we're talking about here specifically, we have no more information on, is what they're going to be doing with texturing. Now texturing uh, is a combination of node-based textures and mask painting will help towards a better non-destructive painting pipeline within Blender. Brush management and performance are related topics that will be visited as well. So texturing is going to be a priority in 2022, which I definitely like to see. I would definitely like to see improved texturing tools, but there's no project page or more details or anything else to drill into. So now we're going to talk about those three other features, application templates, overrides, and physics. Now I'll start off with application templates. This one's probably in some ways the most interesting and least interesting in a way. What application templates are going to enable you to do is come up here, you'll see file, new, and then you have these options here. But let's say you, you've made uh, a new tool built on top of Blender. What you have the ability to do is add that there as well. You'll be able to extend the capability abilities of Blender. Use Blender as sort of an application host for building your own development tools, or sorry, your own um, developments on top of it, but it doesn't break the existing user's setup. So you can see here, application templates are features that allows you to redefine reusable configurations that can be selected to replace the default configuration without requiring a separate Blender installation or overriding your personal settings. Application templates can be selected from the splash screen or file new submenu. When there are no templates, basically nothing's going to happen in the splash menu. 
So why are they doing this? Uh, in some cases, not enough to write a single script or an add-on and expect someone to replace their preferences in startup file, install scripts, and change their key map. The goal of application templates is to support switching to a customized configuration without disrupting your existing settings and installations. This means people can build their own applications on top of Blender that can be easily distributed. And this is one of those things I actually find really nice. Sometimes when you're trying to work on an add-on that's very extensive, it also really overwrites a lot of the functionality of Blender, especially as I may have wanted to configure it, this is going to get away from that. So uh, definitely an interesting approach. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Blender is used as a host for custom development tools going forward. Uh, but again, not the sexiest thing ever, but it could also have some of the biggest ramifications. So that's application templates. Next up, we have library overrides. Now, this is a replacement for proxies. And to understand library overrides, it's probably best to understand the use cases behind them. So we're going to get into that in a second. But a library overrides support multiple uh, independent overrides of the same linked data, for example, uh, the same character multiple times in a scene, uh, adding new modifiers and constraints anywhere in the stack, and recursively chaining overrides, uh, i.e. link and override uh, overrides from another library file. Now, this is a plumbing level thing. Uh, it's going to be changing you know, fundamentally the way data is stored inside of Blender, uh, but it's also going to... Uh, enable new functionality. People may not have realized that BMesh, a new way of changing the way polygons are handled inside of Blender, led to you know better sculpting tools, better knife tools, better polygon tools, and so on. This is the same sort of thing, but it's at a data level with the way that objects are represented internally to Blender. Now, in terms of why you'd want to do this, well, here we can see some use cases from the project page on it. Animators using proxies for animations, multiple instances of the same characters with different animations, multiple instances of the same characters with various variations such as material tweaks, etc. Um, set dressing with local variations of instance assets and override linked in characters with cached animations. So those are kind of the use cases they see behind this change. And then if you head on down here, there's actually a video kind of, um, it showcases the shortcoming of the current proxy system that animations are going to be replacing. So it goes through a number of different scenarios where the current way that Blender does things breaks and what um, overrides will ultimately accomplish there. Again, it's a plumbing level change change, uh, but it's going to enable better workflow, better uh, tool support, better everything on top of it. So again, it's not something like a new um, texturing tool that you can immediately interact with, but it will change the way you work with Blender in a positive manner at least if it's done well. And then finally, we come back to nodes and physics. Now, nodes is the big thing from 2021, again, in my opinion, the geometry nodes, but there is a move towards everything as nodes. This is very Houdini in the way that Houdini works. Side effects software's Houdini is a very procedural-driven, node-driven software. And a node is kind of can be thought of as like a building block or a Lego block. You bring all those Lego blocks together um, to build more complicated systems. And that is... Uh, kind of how geometry nodes works right now. You start with you know basic shapes, combine them together, create your own. Uh, so as you saw in that example, a strawberry, and then you can use that node network you just created in another node network as a topping on top of. So you can see how these interaction of nodes can really change the way your workflow works. Well, where they're moving next is to implement this into the physics system. So the geometry nodes uh, is already in place. I expect through 2022, we'll also see improvements to geometry nodes, but it's moving into the area of physics. So we're going to see... Um, simulations, many physics systems such as rigid bodies, uh, cloth, uh, fluid, and smoke, the Manta flow systems, as well as soft bodies, those are all going to be node-driven as well. The existing uh, bullet-based physics system will still be in place, uh, but you will be able to drive physics simulations using node networks, which what I really kind of like about geometry nodes right now is it's also kind of a way of creating reusable tools, quite simply. You can send a blend file over to somebody with a geometry node network in there, and then you just set a couple of parameters, and it you know really changes how the, the node network works. Like as we saw in action, changing uh, the cut here changed how the strawberry itself was generated. Whereas, you know, you could change the toppings and change the way the toppings were done. You could use this in a building simulator uh, to say the number of floors or the, the facade on the front of the building, etc. Well, you'll be able to get into the same thing with physics as well. And these make it so you can sort of create, I could create a building dot blend file uh, that has destructible physics in it via geometry or I guess physics nodes in the future and then you as an end user can just use my work. It does really make the uh, extensibility of Blender and the functionality. It, it, technical people can create some really complicated systems that previously would have required either a plug-in approach or um, you know, some uh, 
uh, Python scripting, etc., to accomplish it. Well, Nodes kind of really opens that up, and it makes it uh, reusable, reshareable. And I guess you could probably interact with the new override system uh, to make things work even better. So uh, that's where they're working from here. Uh, you can see there are, there's going to be uh, projects. There's no project page for them yet, other than the Geometry Nodes project. But we're going to see Mantaflow, Rigid, uh, Body Physics, and Cloth simulations all being added here as well. And I also think Function Nodes is going to get, bring back a little bit of the functionality that we saw from uh, the Blender Game Engine uh, in. So you're going to have a little bit more uh, scriptable ability, but it's going to be using nodes in that particular case. So uh, that is it. So again, we had big developments in Blender 2021, and we're going to probably see more detail. We'll probably get the equivalent of a roadmap at some point. So keep in mind, this didn't come out until April of 2021. What we see today, this is more of a strategic target. It's a top level thing. This is what the Blender Institute's main development tasks are focused on in 2022. And again, quick recap, application templates, which enable you to basically create your own applications on top of Blender without uh, messing with a user's local settings. So it really kind of adds to um, making Blender a tool for creating tools going forward uh, and making those tools easier to use for end users without it clashing with their own development environment. Uh, we've got overrides. Uh, again, we're going to replace the proxy system. Uh, we got physics in terms of uh, geometry nodes, next step, is physics nodes. And then we have uh, texturing support updates, which again, not a ton of details in that regard. But that's what we're looking at for Blender in 2022. 2021 was a heck of a year. There is all kinds of momentum behind Blender. We've got all kinds of uh, sponsors coming on board with Blender all the way through the year. All the major OEMs seem to be on board now. All the major operating system companies seem to be on board now. And, uh, you know, things are looking great. And these are the development priorities. I'd be interested to hear what you think of where they're going. Also, do keep in mind, uh, we have the things from the 2021 roadmap, things like uh, Vulkan rendering support, uh, animation character pipeline changes, and so on. Those are still going on. I would expect for every release, the USD importer and exporter functionality to get better and better and so on. Uh, but these are the new driving priorities for 2022. And I'd be interested in knowing or hearing what you think of this um, these sets of priorities of the state of Blender in general. And yeah, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.